Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Straight Out of Nowhere. Scooby Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog, and this is a this is what I'm excited for. Uh, and yes, this is another non-donation award movie reaction for this week. It's just I decided I, I decided kind of midweek. It's like okay, we already did one donation reward or one non-donation award movie. This movie's coming out this week. We're just, we'll get back to the donation awards next week. We'll, I, I really want to get to this movie as well. Um, and I can't do this and a donation award. It, I just don't have the time. <laughs> um, so I, I decided to do this this week. And just have this week be donation award free. <laughs> but again, we will be, uh, in terms of movies, we will be getting back to those next week. So... Uh, some of you might remember, I did a countdown list a while back on my favorite Courage the Cowardly Dog episodes. And those of you who have been watching for a while know that I am a fan of both Courage and Scooby-Doo. I've been a huge fan of both for as long as I can remember, since I first saw Courage on Cartoon Network, since I first saw Scooby-Doo on Cartoon Network. And although I'm not a fan of every incarnation of them, like or, well, of Scooby-Doo. Courage has only really had one incarnation. <laughs> um, like, I don't like Mystery Inc., but I'm still a big fan of both, and everyone's always wanted them to cross over. Like, there were some bumpers on Cartoon Network uh, that had them cross over, but those were just, like, a few seconds. They were just bumpers to promote the network and the shows. They weren't actually part of any series or movie or anything. So this has been a long time coming. And when this was announced, I, I remember I, I freaked out a bit because this is big. This is a big announcement. To finally have these two cross over is amazing. And this was voice recorded and everything prior to the death of Muriel's voice actress. So this is going to be, I, I, this is probably one of, if not her last roles prior to her passing. And so there is going to be some emotion for me there. But the voice cast in this in general is fantastic. They got the, the voices for the Courage characters back and the voices they chose to go with for the cast of the Scooby-Doo gang, the Scooby gang, is great. They got Matthew Lillard for Shaggy. Frank Welker is there as Scooby and Fred, uh, Gray Griffin as Daphne, and, um, oh god, I had all their names in my head and now I can't remember her name. The, the girl who plays Mabel in Gravity Falls, or no, no, it's not Christian Shaw, am I thinking? It's the other one. Crap. Hold on. <laughs> That's gonna bother me for a little bit, right? Kate Micucci, Sadie in uh, um, Steven Universe. <laughs> Not Christian Shaw. <laughs> um, I, got, I just got that wrong straight up. No, Kate Micucci is Velma in this. Um, and I don't know who else is going to pop up in this. I don't know if there's going to be any like classic Scooby villains or classic uh, Courage villains. Um, it would be cool to see characters like Cats or uh, the Goose God or whatnot in this, but I don't know if they'll go with that. I, I don't even know if like they'll bring in like Dr. Vindaloo or anyone like that, or the Tourist. Um, there's so many great Courage characters they could bring in. Um, Madam Shirley would be great, but I, I don't know if they're gonna do that. Um, I also don't know if they're gonna bring in any other classic Scooby characters. Um, we'll just have to see. I don't know what this is about at all. I don't know the actual plot. I don't know how the characters come together. I know nothing about that. And I, I haven't heard any spoilers. I haven't heard anything about what happens in this or 
even about any jokes or whatnot. So that's good. I'm <laughs> going into this spoiler free. Um, I saw, I think, one trailer, but I don't remember too much what was in it. I don't remember if it even said how they meet up or anything. I, it just showed them, like, interacting. And I don't remember, like I said, pretty much anything about it. So we're good. We're good. Um, but I am very excited for this. It is something that, like many people, I have just always wanted to see. And now we finally got it. And it's awesome. So, yeah, let's just get into this and hope for the best uh, with Straight Outta Nowhere. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to my redirect and... I don't know why I said my redirect instead of the redirect. Come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So yeah, like I said in the pre-thoughts, I grew up with both of these properties. I have seen every episode of Courage multiple times. I've seen a good amount of Scooby-Doo. I wouldn't say every episode, but... A very good amount of Scooby-Doo, uh, both the shows, the movies, uh, all that kind of content. Um, and like I said, we've all been kind of wanting them to cross over. It, it's just always been something people wanted. So when this announcement originally came, it was a big surprise to everyone. Like, it, well, it came straight out of nowhere. It came... Um, just kind of out of the blue one day and it's like we were all excited that this was finally happening something people have wanted for a long ass time and so i was admittedly worried that because it's been so long i was worried as how they were going to do this how how good it was going to possibly be going into it because it's it's been so long since Courage has been on the air. And Scooby-Doo has changed a lot over the years. Luckily, the spirits of both of these properties were fully realized here. This felt like Courage. This felt like Scooby-Doo. And, and the good Scooby-Doo, I guess you could say more around the time of like the, uh, the big... Uh, movies and all for Scooby-Doo, like Zombie Island and Cyber Chase and all of that. Um, th those movies, like where Scooby-Doo was really at its peak. It's that kind of level. And now getting to see this and everything, it's like, yeah, the, the, they clearly properly represented both properties here. Um, at, while at the same time giving some massive lore for courage that I really didn't expect. Um, so the main gist of this movie is after solving a crime, the Scooby gang find themselves in the middle of nowhere, lured uh, by, well, Scooby was lured into the middle of the nowhere and they followed him by a mysterious signal. Uh, after arriving, they meet Courage and the uh, family, I guess you could call them, Eustace and Muriel, and begin to investigate the mystery of what is happening in nowhere with a bunch of giant cicadas. And it leads to this mayor's mansion where we spend a good portion of time. It leads to a cornfield. Uh, and eventually all is found out that the meteor that destroyed the dinosaurs all those millions of years ago crash landed where the middle of nowhere now exists, where Nowhere County, apparently it's a county as they called it in this film, where Nowhere County currently exists is the crash site of the original meteor that killed the dinosaurs. And the meteor is made out of dark matter, which causes it to have these crazy uh, unstable effects on the surrounding area within the crater of the meteor's crash site. 
Uh, the remains of the meteor caused all of these weird effects to happen, creating, in this case, obviously giant cicadas, but everything that's happened in nowhere. Uh, for pretty much the history of the entire time it's been there. For all that time, like all of these things that we've seen in the Courage of Harley Dog series are due to this meteor. This is huge information. It's actually given us the reason why all of this weird stuff happens there. It's given us the reason why you have cats and La Quack and all of this other stuff that seems just so out of nowhere. And it's just... I, I feel like this could have easily felt wrong to explain it um because some some people could say like oh it would actually be better to not be explained it would be better if they kept that kind of a well a mystery to keep it uh just like something you don't need to explain something that just doesn't need to be delved into i, I could see that line of reasoning for sure but i think that it was handled really well here um, like, logically, realistically, and, uh, it doesn't, like, obviously make a huge amount of sense, but a lot of things in, uh, in Scooby-Doo and, um, Courage never have. Like, everyone pretty much universally agrees that, uh, Zombie Island is the best Scooby-Doo movie, and it's super blatant that it doesn't really make sense. This weird cat cult is the reason for the zombies, and they turn into cat monsters themselves. It's like, what the, what the fuck is that? Nothing about that is logical. And, and Scooby-Doo, or er, and Courage, rather. Nothing in Courage has ever made sense. Even explaining it here, it doesn't make it make sense. It doesn't, like, give it, like, this logical reason. It's still just as weird, still just as unusual, still just as illogical so that doesn't change anything um but it's interesting nonetheless it, it still gives explanation it gives lore to nowhere it tells us a lot and even though it's again still doesn't make much sense it works for what it needs to do um, the characters mesh together really well. Um, I love how Eustace is very critical and everything of, uh, of the Scooby gang because, because they're, let's be honest, because they're like, uh, I wouldn't say they're hippies, but with the van and everything, it's clear, like, his reaction to the van and all, and it's like, it's kind of that similar style, I guess you could say. Um, and, and he's just, he doesn't like that. And, but Muriel is just instantly grows attached to them and acts like this, like, grandmotherly figure to them and everything. Courage and Scooby work really well off of each other, being very similar, of course. Um, and I love, I, I love, by the way, how they integrated the meaning of courage in here. Um, like... I got pretty excited during that part because I've always I've always defended that idea and stood up for that idea that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather taking action despite fear. And it's like it's been heard in plenty of places before and everything. Um, but I've always kind of defended that because I always feel like it's well, it's true. Courage is not like be, not being afraid. In, in, in honestly, in my opinion, it's not possible to be completely unafraid. Everyone's afraid of something, even if they don't want to admit it. Courage is simply looking at those fears and not letting it stop you. Not letting those fears control your life. Taking action and doing what's right or what's needed, even though you're afraid. 
And I, so I love it any time a show or a movie or a game or something touches on that. It, it's like someone getting excited over every time some kind of piece of media brings up the butterfly effect. It, it's the same kind of situation for me. It's like, okay, so every time a series, a movie, a game, etc., a comic brings up this idea of true courage and the meaning of courage, it's like, that excites me. Because, especially because it's a good message to teach to the younger viewers. Um, the, the younger people watching this, the kids and everything, are going to see this and going to see, like, it's okay to be afraid. Everyone's afraid of something. Being courageous isn't about not being afraid. It's about taking action in, in despite that fear. And that's going to be a great message to teach to kids. It's going to help them so much. Um, but yeah, I, I really like that. Um, if there's anything I would say I didn't like in this film, it, it was the Eustace rap. The straight out of nowhere rap. It was so fucking cringy. It was so fucking cringy. It's like... There's been a lot of movies, a lot of shows and stuff that have inserted uh, a random out of fucking nowhere rap segment um, because they think it's uh, it's the cool thing to do to appeal to kids. And it's like, it's, it's, just, it's just cringe. Every single fucking time, it's just super cringy. It just, it's out of place and just, it does not work ever. To make these characters do that. And it feels so unnatural too. It's like, yeah, of course, Eustace would be reveling in the gold and everything. I would have been fine if they made a DuckTales reference. With Eustace swimming in the gold and everything. If they did some kind of DuckTales reference with that, that would have been fine. I would have been all kinds of game for that. But doing a, a rap segment just felt so wrong. It was... It was just really hard to watch, and it just didn't make sense for the character either. So I just think that was a big mistake on their part. But it was the only thing I really think didn't work here. Um, I like that there were many references to characters and, and whatnot from Courage. Um, and, and I like that there was a little bit of self-aware humor, too. Um, I like that we got to see a double reveal in the end, um, having it be the mayor and then having the mayor actually have been Katz and LeQuack, um, two of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, Courage villains. Um, and, and the funny thing is, while during the mayor's mansion segment of the movie, I was actually thinking, could the mayor be behind this? Could he be the bad guy here? Um, like, e even when, like, the, uh, Cicada kidnapped him and turned him into a Cicada, during that one part, like, my thought is, like, what if that's just a costume and the cicada was coming out of the back of it? What if that was the case? And I think that is what it was supposed to be going for. It, it was either a costume or a puppet or something in that moment. Um, but at the same time, it's like, okay. It just doesn't feel, like, entirely there for me. But at the same time, I wasn't, like, thinking, like, okay, it's guaranteed this dude is the bad guy. I was just kind of, like, questioning things. And I, I wasn't even thinking of the idea that a, a bad guy from Courage would actually, like, a very well-known one, or much less two, would actually be the villain in the end. Um, this is definitely something Cats and LeQuack would do, but I did not for a second think it was going to be them. <laughs> um kind of threw me off a little bit there. Um, but but in the end, it does work. Um, and then the fact that the butler, um, the butler and the uh, chef, the, the couple there, I forgot, their names were like Glockenspiel or something, um, how they ended up being the general and lieutenants, like that was so unexpected at that point, but really fucking funny. <laughs> um... It's just like everything just kind of worked. There was a lot of good humor, a really good, fun story that just really felt like it was out of both of these 
franchises. It felt like they got Courage right, that they got Scooby-Doo right. All of the characters within this that we know and love. And that's all I really wanted from this. That's all I could really ask for. That they understood the source material and that they would play with that and have fun. And they did. They understood it. They played with it. They had fun. And for what could be one of, if not her last performance, Thea White did amazing. This was a fantastic way to send her off. And <laughs> I'm just really happy that I got to hear her as Muriel one last time. It wouldn't have been the same without her. Like, Courage the Cowardly Dog was always great because Courage, the villains, the dark humor and the, the, the fun of it all, the eccentricity. But Muriel, Muriel always felt like the heart of the series. She always felt like she was what Courage was always fighting for. The things he does for love. So it just, it's really meaningful to have one last, one last ride with her. And if they do do anything in the future, I, I, I almost don't want them to. I want, I almost want this to be the last hurrah because I just, I don't feel like it would work to recast her. I don't feel like that would be okay. Thea White was, she was Miriam. And, and I, I think that we should let this be her legacy. So yeah, sorry for the emotional bit there. I just, I had to say something on that. But I'm just really happy that they did this. That after all these years, they finally brought these two together and gave us exactly what we always wanted. What we always thought that would happen when these two met. And so I am more than satisfied with how this turned out. But tell me in the comments below, what did you think of Straight Outta Nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Scourge the Cowardly Dog? Did you find it as dream fulfilling as I did? Or did you have a few more issues with it? Let me know down below, and thank you all so much for watching. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.